what's up beautiful people welcome back to my channel it's been a hot man and i mean i'm even blonde now blame it on the streets the streets be doing things to me <laughs> so if you're a regular it's not your first time here thank you for tuning in once again you're the real mvp if you're new here my name is Amma Cheng. i cover travel lifestyle and business so feel free to subscribe down below to get content on travel and any other topic that i mentioned but also hit the bell button so that anytime i drop a new video or any new content you are notified and you're the first one to know so today i'm going to be talking about things you should know before planning a safari trip especially if you're planning a safari trip to serengeti or ngorongoro this video is definitely for you so let's dive right in the first things first is what to pack. So I've categorized this into the three C's. That will be your clothes, your comfortable accessories, and your camera. So it's very important to look into all these three sectors, what to pack when you're going for a safari. So in terms of clothes, there's a lot of myths around that, you know, you're not supposed to wear bright colors, you're not supposed to wear black. So is this true? Is there any scientific backing to this? So apparently I'm here to tell you that it's partially true and partially not true because if you wear black clothes apparently it's very attractive to sepsis flies which cause sleeping sickness and they are there in the national park so you'd want to try to avoid black clothing because they're attracted to that but you can still wear your red bright clothes you can still wear your yellows i mean i wear a yellow yellow jumpsuit at some point you can still wear your black clothes and i mean not black sorry you can still wear your bright yellows you can still wear your bright reds and have a good time and still look fly so it's not a must to keep up with the khakis and the neutrals like as if you're from a set of a safari movie or whatnot but it's nice to camouflage with your safari car and the environment but it's not there's no scientific backing that if you wear red it's a problem not at all so you can put on your bright colors except try to avoid the blacks something else to note about your clothing it really would depend in the season that you go in the, to the serengeti or Ngoro, Ngoro, because there are two seasons there's the dry season and there's the wet season i went during the dry season so you'd find that it can get really hot during the day and it can get chilly and pretty cold for some people during the night so it's really important to pack appropriately i can't speak much on the wet season because i've not been there during the wet season but i would assume obviously during the wet season you definitely try to pack more of your raincoats and anything try to protect yourself with the cold and the rain obviously but the time that i went which is the dry season is uh from june to around august make sure to try to uh, pack appropriately your casual t-shirts your casual shirts your shorts can also apply but then when it gets during the evening whereby some game drives can go up to the evening or if you're transporting from one place to another it can get cold during the evening and very chilly so i would advise you pack your light clothes for the day but at the same time pack your a little bit heavier clothes for the night so that you are also well protected when it gets chilly so carry your coat for example i carried my sweater i carried my coat because a girl and cold are not two things that you know quite <laughs> link up very well so pack make sure you're comfortable and you're warm for the night but at the same time you can pack your casual clothes that you know your shorts your light shirts your trousers it's very important if you're doing a safari walk so you can opt to walk in the national parks now we definitely advise you to carry pants more of pants so that you know even if you're walking through the grasses you're not pestered and whatnot make sure you pack appropriately the other C is your comfortable accessories. Now, you'd find that during a safari, most or averagely a bigger chunk of your time would be spent doing your game drive. So you'll be inside the car, you'll be inside the safari cruiser. So it's important, yes, a hat is important, but I didn't find it very necessary because you're not outside most of the times unless your car is an open roof. 
um, but most of the times um, it would be a card that can also have its top down or up whatever the case you can be covered so it's important also to pack a hat but it's not very necessary to my opinion something that I found very important to pack is your scarf or something to cover your nose and mouth because you'd find that the roads that you're passing through in the national parks they're dirt roads so it's very dusty it can get very windy so at times even if you're in the car it gets so dusty I mean our bags and our clothes were filled with dust so if you if you're okay with dust that's fine but if you're not okay with dust make sure you have something to cover up your mouth or nose so that you don't end up with um sneezing or a flu or something of that sort so a scarf is very very important third thing glasses it's very important to have your glasses your shades not only are they stylish but also it can get very sunny so you'd want to have your glasses to be able to roam around well in your game drive car or wherever you are if you're chilling in your hotel whatever the case but carry your sunglasses another accessory to carry is your sunscreen as i mentioned before especially during the dry season it gets really sunny during the day so carry a sunscreen make sure you're very well protected the rays don't joke the sun doesn't joke in the serengeti and gorongoro so make sure you carry a sunscreen so that you're protected and you're comfortable at the same time you don't want to have any sunburn at the end of the day lastly in terms of comfortable accessories carry comfortable shoes so as i also mentioned before you will be in the game drive car for a long time so carry your nice cakes you can have your nice boots you can have you can even have sandals because believe me you'll be in the car for a long time because you you'll be driving around in the places but at the same time you don't want to carry sandals just in case you get stuck in the mud that would be a little bit tricky to navigate so carry comfortable shoes that you know that in case of anything as well you're still comfortable to walk around and in, in case you need to to drop um drop outside the cruiser you can still do that with your shoes being very comfortable the last c is your camera your camera is very important and the type of camera you go with is also very important you'd find that um you know wild animals i say this also in my other social media posts it's not like a building that you'd go and you'd find it there all the time they're unpredictable obviously the spots especially a professional tour guide will know that okay lions stay at this spot zebras but most of the times they'd be moving around so if you find you get to see an animal close up it's a good thing and you're lucky it's, it's well and good for you but in case you're not able to see it close up which is most of the times you'd need your camera with lenses that will be able to capture pictures from afar you need to keep those memories even if it's not a camera you can use your phone the lenses for your phone so it's important to have a camera a gadget that can really capture pictures from afar uh, and not just up close because you'd find that most of these animals or most of the um, attractions which are animals or whatever it is that you see would probably be afar or you need something that would be able to catch it from afar better than up close now that we have our bag ready and you know exactly what to pack let's get into transportation so getting to serengeti on gorongoro is fairly easy if you ask me the road system in tanzania is super good so if you're planning to drive from whatever city that you're driving from be it dar salaam be it mwanza be it arusha whatever the case you can easily get to serengeti on gorongoro via the road that's the first thing that you need to know in case you're trying to save your coins you can easily buckle up in a car and drive to there but at the same time in case you're not trying to spend hours on the road trying to get to serengeti on gorongoro you can fly in there are seven airstrips in the serengeti so making it very convenient for you to travel if you're coming from zanzibar you're coming from dar you're coming from arusha um through the kilimanjaro airport you can easily fly in through the small charters and there are many small charter flights that go into the serengeti and from the airstrips you can get um, a vehicle from there to come pick you up to your hotel or wherever you stay so getting to serengeti and gorongoro is easy and that shouldn't be a worry for you you can easily google um the ways to get there 
either by road or by air. The second leg of transportation would be your car or your mode of transportation while you're inside the national parks. So most of the times people would rent out a safari cruiser. However, you can go in with your car as well. It's not the best advice I would give somebody to drive your own car unless you have like a big car. Um, sorry, I'm not that good with cars. So I can't get all technical in it. I can assure you that there was a time when I was in my trip, we saw an X-Trails tire fly off its rim. Like literally the tire like flew away. So you'd find that the roads in the parks have stones and um, they're dirt roads. So they have small sharp stones. And I'll give you a picture of also what happened to our tire. You think somebody slashed it, but it's, it's, the, it's the stones. So it's important to have something that a car mode of transportation that would be able to tackle such circumstances, especially the roads that are in there. So if you're planning to go with your personal car, which you can, and there are permits and fees that you need to get at the gates of the parks in order to get in with your uh, personal car you can do that but my advice would be to rent out a cruiser a safari cruiser a game drive car and the safari cruiser can vary in terms of it, its cost depending on the season so if it's high season they're in high demand there's so many tourists definitely they'll be more expensive if it's low season Obviously, they're not much business, so they'll be cheaper. So depending on the time that you're going, that will determine the cost of the cruiser that you are renting out. I would advise if you're not familiar with the companies that provide cars or you're not very familiar of what's happening on the ground, I would advise to take a package from tour agents because then you are assured, okay, you're not always assured because they can also con you, but you are assured that you have everything in check. Unlike if you start searching for a car on your own, there are issues and instances where you might rent out a car that has a lot of problems you go to your safari after an hour you have a breakdown so you might have to you know has spent a lot of time trying to fix the car and you don't want that so unless you know somebody that is trustworthy or reliable company that you can rent out with in terms of the car the safari cruiser i would advise to either take a car from the hotel most of the hotels that are in the national parks would provide their cars at an extra cost or they would link you to companies that are trustworthy to them to be able to drive you around in the game drives and in the parks so either or just be very careful in terms of the cars that you're renting out you don't want to be uh, paying a lot of money and ending up wasting a lot of time fixing the cars and not enjoying the safari so it's very important to look into this while you're trying to sort out your transportation inside the parks now that you're there you have your car checked out you have um, your transportation to the parks you have your transportation inside the parks third thing to note is accommodation this is very very important now the serengeti is huge it's very very it's a very big national park so it's very important to know exactly if the accommodation that you're choosing is inside the park what do you want to see what are your goals what are you trying to achieve inside the park and i'll tell you why shortly you'd find that the north serengeti most people go there if they're trying to see the migration crossing great migration for those who don't know is an annual ongoing event whereby you'd have wildebeest and gazelles and zebras moving in the same pattern uh, from one place to another so then move uh, between the serengeti ngorongoro a little bit of kenya in the maasai mara and then be crossing the mara river which is towards the north of serengeti so this is a spectacular thing to witness people fly miles people uh, travels from so far to be able to witness this natural wonder and i was also there for that to be honest it's been in my bucket list for the longest time and that's why i chose a hotel in the northern serengeti because it's close by to the mara river where you can see the crossing so in case maybe that's your target you want to see the crossing and that's your main thing definitely choose accommodation to the north of serengeti but maybe if you're trying to see a lot of animals because to be honest and this is from my experience when I had traveled there. 
in the north them animals the migration you see the migration you see the wildebeest and whatnot but you wouldn't see a lot of animals like the big five you know the other big fives and whatnot but when i moved to the central serengeti whereby um this is the seronera and it's the central serengeti there are so many animals there the action the wildlife action there is insane and it's amazing there are hippo pools um lions are easily spotted leopards you can you can easily spot the big five so if that's your intention i would also advise to choose accommodation in central serengeti instead of the north mind you i say this because it's a big place so in case maybe you're trying to do both serengeti and gorongoro navigating between the two places especially if you're staying in the north and you want to go to ngorongoro it can be tricky or tiring if you are constrained by time if you have like maybe 10 days that's absolutely fine but if you're constrained with time i would advise maybe choose an accommodation in central serengeti and do the ngorongoro as well if you're trying to combine both the two central serengeti has so many hotels depending on your budget you can check out different hotels um, through also my social media i've highlighted some and i'll also be doing a review of some of the places that i've stayed at which were beautiful there's so many camps that you can stay there there are also camps that follow the migration because the the migration is a very big attraction in the serengeti so you'd have camps that are movable so you can also look at this so one day you're here one day you're there you're just tracking the migration which is very interesting if you ask me in terms of ngorongoro where to stay there's so many places as well that you can stay high end middle whatever that you decide you can also look into tanapa which stands for tanzania national parks authority so they also provide different um camping options they have bandas you can camp you can put up a tent so they have different categories i've not slept there so i wouldn't know but i hear that they have quite decent accommodation as well which is quite cheap as well so if you're trying to look for something that's high-end there is high-end believe me if you're trying to look for something that's not uh, very high-end there's also not very high end in there. Also, if you're trying to save some costs in terms of your accommodation in Serengeti or Ngorongoro, you can opt to sleep outside the camp. You can sleep in Karatu, you can sleep in Mtuambu. These are all nearby the camp. So you can sleep outside the park and then go inside the park maybe for your daily game drives and come outside and sleep um, outside the park. You'd find also many options outside the park that are good in the places that I've mentioned, but also you'll be saving in your permit costs because there are fees that need to be paid when you're sleeping inside the parks. And this comes to my next pointer that you need to really be aware of, which are permits and fees costs. Now that you've packed your bags, you've gotten to Ngorongoro Serengeti, you've uh, you've booked your hotel and you're comfortable you have your game drive so you're doing your game drive you need to understand that all this is not possible if you don't pay the fees and costs the permits at the park for any country that depends on tourism fees and permits are very important in order to regulate our economy there are different permits and fees depending if you're Tanzanian, which is the local citizen, or if you're an East African resident, or if you're a foreigner. So there are many costs, different costs, depending on what you're trying to do inside the parks as well. For Serengeti, you'd find that you have your concession fee and your park fees, which can vary depending if you're a foreigner or Tanzanian. And down below, I've also linked um, a link to the Tanapa website whereby you can check out all the costs for the permits. They vary, to be honest. And for Ngorongoro Conservation Area, they also have their costs that you need to pay. So, for example, for Ngorongoro, I paid 35000 in order to sleep inside the camp because my hotel was inside the camp. And you'd find that it's either the hotel that you're sleeping with pays it for you so you'd pay them and they pay it for you or your tour agent pays it for you or you would need to pay it via uh, before entering and you'd use your visa card but they do not accept cash so that's something important to note um permits and fees are very important 
And I say this because there was a point when I was traveling from Serengeti to Ngorongoro. We had a, quite a hiccup for of the permits. So it's very important. You don't want to waste your time. You don't want to be um, you don't want to be mad. You know, it's you don't want also to be conned by people in terms of the permit fees costs. So you can check out the link below in order to get to know more. So all in all, those are the four main things to know before visiting um, Serengeti or Ngorongoro. What to pack, which depends with the season that you're going, either dry season or wet season, pack appropriately. The second thing would be your transportation. Make sure you get the right car um inside the game drives you don't want to be stranded with a car that doesn't work you don't want to spoil your trip like that but at the same time you can easily get to the parks um, you can easily get to Serengeti park and then go and grow conservation area by road or you can fly in whatever you decide the third thing is your accommodation there's so much so there's so many options that you can choose from inside the park outside the park if you want to save a bit of cash as well or you can choose the tanapa accommodation that they're providing it's really up to you the fourth thing and very important is your permit and fees costs make sure you also understand these well and you're able to pay prior before going you don't want to be stranded there while about to start your trip because believe me you will not have a good time and it will cause such a huge inconvenience to you. Um, so comment below if you guys have been to Serengeti or have been to Ngorongoro. How was the experience like? What are some of the hotels that you can recommend? Let's just engage in the comment section so that other people can also learn a thing or two. But I would definitely invite and urge anybody to put these two places in your bucket list. Serengeti is a beautiful, beautiful, one of the best national parks to visit in Africa. It provides so many, so many, so many wildlife action, but most importantly, where you can see the Great Migration, which is a natural wonder. One of the seven best natural wonders in Africa. So it's something that should definitely be in your bucket list. Gorongora is a beautiful, beautiful place as well. And it's, um, it's an area whereby you can see the big five in such a short span in a day you can see all the big five to be honest so it's really a beautiful place also to visit i hope this video was useful to you if it was comment with a thumbs up give me a thumbs up to push the algorithm thank you all for tuning in be sure to catch my other videos of my serengeti and gorongoro trip that are coming up i'll be doing reviews of hotels i'll be showing you a bit of the great migration that i saw so be very excited for that thank you for tuning in and bye